Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. In our last lesson we talked about different organic compounds and how they can be built into chains called polymers. And those polymers are built up by building blocks of monomers. So what we're going to do in this vodcast here is we're going to talk about how those monomers such as glucose and amino acids can get bonded together to create these long chains and also how we can actually take those big polymers like starches and proteins and break them down into their building blocks when we need them. The first reaction we're going to talk about is dehydration synthesis. Now dehydration synthesis is a chemical reaction that bonds the monomers like glucose and amino acids with the removal of water. So it sticks them together. Now if you think about the term dehydration synthesis and you think about the meaning of the words, this definition is pretty simple to remember. Dehydration. If you're feeling dehydrated, you, you have a loss of water. You don't have a lot of water. So this is the taking out of water. And synthesis basically means to build or to put together. So when you put these two definitions together, it's basically saying it's building something with the removal or loss of water. So first of all, in step one of dehydration synthesis, you have our glucose molecules here and here. They have to fit into a protein called an enzyme. And there's a specific part of an enzyme called the active site. Now when we take a look at an enzyme, you'll notice that the enzyme here is going to have these areas carved out where these glucose molecules will fit in. This is the active site because this is where the action is going to take place, because this is where the molecules are going to sit. Once you have these molecules in the active site of the enzyme, then we can move on to step two. Step two basically says a hydrogen from one glucose molecule and an OH group from another glucose molecule will break off and then bond together and form water. So this is what that looks like. Okay, so this OH is going to leave and then this hydrogen is going to leave to bond with that. And as a result, we have an oxygen left alone here and then we have nothing on this side of the glucose. But when we take a look at this molecule here, we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. Well, that means we have a compound called H2O, which is water. Once that water is removed, the sugars then bond to form a disaccharide. So the leftover oxygen here is going to then bond with the carbon on the other glucose molecule. And as a result, water is lost. And this is called dehydration synthesis. When we take out the water, the leftover oxygen bonds with the other molecule. Now let's take a quick look at hydrolysis. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the process called hydrolysis. Now hydrolysis is simply the chemical breakdown of a compound with the use of water. Now if you take a look at the word hydrolysis and break it up into its two parts, hydro and lysis, this is going to be an easy definition to remember. Hydro typically refers to anything that has to do with water, and lysis means to split or to separate or to break apart. When you put those definitions together, it essentially means to break apart with water, and that's what hydrolysis is. So let's take a look at the steps of hydrolysis and how this actually happens. Now step one, as we talked about before in dehydration synthesis, the molecules have to enter an enzyme. So you're going to have your maltose, which is what we have here, which is a disaccharide of two glucose stuck together or bonded together, and they're going to enter the enzyme in the active site. So again, if you take a look at this diagram here, you'll see that the enzyme has these special shapes for the glucose to sit into, and that is the active site where this chemical reaction is going to take place. Then two, we simply add water to the chemical reaction. Now water is added to either a disaccharide or a polysaccharide, if we're talking about sugars, or if we're talking about proteins, a dipeptide or a polypeptide. Remember, peptide always refers to proteins. Once we have that happen, then step three goes into play. Step three is when the sugar actually splits into two molecules. What's going to happen is this. Your water is made up of two hydrogens, H2, and then the oxygen, the O. So this is going to be the reverse of dehydration synthesis. So one of the hydrogen molecules from the water is then going to attach to the exposed oxygen molecule from one of these sugars. Because remember, in dehydration synthesis, we bonded these two molecules at the oxygen. So now that the oxygen is released, this hydrogen is now going to move and bond with the oxygen. Okay, this now gives us a complete glucose molecule. However, if we take a look at the other glucose molecule, we will notice that it's missing something right here. This carbon needs to have stuff to bond to. It has to get electrons to fill out its electron shells. So since we took the H or one hydrogen from 
the water, we're going to take the remaining hydrogen and the oxygen, and it's going to bond to the other glucose molecule. And once we have that bonding, we've now created a complete glucose molecule here on the right. We created a glucose molecule here on the left. And as you can see, we've split them. They are no longer bonded together in the middle by the oxygen. They are now split because the water, the H2O, has provided the glucose molecules with the elements and the electrons they need to create two complete glucose molecules. And that's all there is to hydrolysis. So that concludes our vodcast on dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis. Thank you for your time. I hope you found that helpful.